Well, like a word, that was good. Nice having you back. Hope you had an eventful summer because eventful it did. It was eventful indeed. Um, but yeah, these these bad boys right here were my summer reads. Let me show you what y'all. The Hobbit. This is like every introverted child's dream coming true. It's this entire hero journey of this little tiny tweaky dog and at the end you know the destination like the treasure isn't even worth it it's the classical hero getting the treasure he, he wanted yeah in the end he, like he doesn't care for it so i think like if i were to have like a a introverted shy child i would definitely give him the hobby you know and the movies were quite right I, I understood the hate but now that i read it is i mean it's quite fun to follow along the second one, The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. This story is sad as hell. Like it's a small book, so it's definitely one you can read if you if you're struggling with reading, want to get back into it. Nonetheless, this man makes 60 to 70 pages of just plain fishing, what is universally considered like the most boring thing to do on earth. Interesting. So like props to him for doing that. Yo, I've been trying to read this book for about six to seven years. I never managed to. I read this throughout the uh, exam period just to like catch some sleep, and it served that purpose. But like, it's a, it's it's pretty shit book to be honest. Like, the author just throws curveballs at you, and the end doesn't really make any sense. It's like too, too cheap. So I don't feel any type of accomplishment by finishing the book. But I guess it's some. Starting and finishing things, I should do that more. Now, for the first time ever, I've read like Spanish uh, literature, which I didn't because of if you're a diaspora as well, like, or if you just know multiple languages, you might feel uncomfortable with someone with some certain languages. Because I remember like 2019, I was visiting family and like they made me read out like a menu card, and I was like, in Panar. Go on, like it was horrible, but like it was quite alright. It's fun. This one, Amor con Amor se paga by Jose Marti. Jose Marti is like considered the father of Cuba. Um, he was this poet, um, writer, journalist, and independence fighter. He even died in one of the first charge, the first uh, charge in the independence war uh, from Spain. So Amor con Amor Chaparra is this, these two, yeah, these two, um, these two persons trying to confess their love for each other, but I think they're not allowed to because of their class or like yeah, societal standing. So they invent this imagined play where they're giving each other ch tasks, challenge, challenges, and confessing their love. Um, it was quite quite beautiful to be honest. You can read it in one book. And the other one in Spanish was La Historia de un Franco Tirador en Stalingrado. So uh, a sniper in Stalingrad. Um, Vasily Zaitsev, bro, this man it was on the real Call of Duty stuff. Like, I think if you enjoyed first person shooters, reading uh, autobiographies is like the is like this shit. Like, this man went from 9 to 11 years old hunting with his granddad in the freezing Urals of, of, of um, Russia to then. Being a marine, serving in the marine, in like freely, in uh, like volunteering to go to Stalingrad, which were, back at that time it was hell on earth. Like there's no other way to describe it, and he does a great job of describing that as well. But like, yo, this is filled with real life Call of Duty stuff. Like I don't want to tell everything, but there's this one thing where they get shelled. They're in a bunker, the Soviets. They get shelled. It crumbles in. Man is like in a state of limbo, holding on to something, and he feels he's holding on to some rugged stuff with like, like a certain I don't know, some moist over it, and and he wakes up, tries to light a cigarette, which he can't, but he lights a match, and then he realizes he's holding on to like the trench coat of a dead comrade, filled with blood. So man starts to panic and not panic and try to shovel his way out. Uh, just grasping for it. The moment he comes out, he finds some Nazis pinning down his comrades, and he vents away. I think like he shoots one of the machine gunners in his arm and lobs over like a grenade. Like it's insane. And there's this other story 
about him ending up in underground mess room with 72 Nazis. I'm not going to tell you how it goes. I'm going to let you all find out yourself. But it's insane stories. And as well as like the inner workings of, well, mainly the inner workings of a sniper, which is insane. He was the most successful sniper in Stalingrad. Or was it even in the East Front? He killed at least, one, uh, he killed 242 uh, Germans in Stalingrad. And going from that, from Stalingrad, to the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> um, it's not as extreme. Uh, maybe, I just wanted to know, like, people say this is the most influential piece of political uh, theory of the last 150 years. So I was like, hey, yo, let me find that, let me find that out for yourself. But as you can see, I highlight, uh, like, the important part and then write something in blue if you like kind of agree with it and write in red if you disagree with it and i think this is like a proper way of digesting uh, political theory it gets you somewhere it gets your brain thinking and it's cool to see what other prevalent like socialist and communist like um thinkings were going on in the place like um it wasn't just marx um Telling his way of communism, there were a lot of different uh, variations of it going on as well. And from communism to the real estate market, yeah, me and Peter Lynch, uh, uh, one up on Wall Street. This one is cool because it teaches you that no matter who you are, small, the small fish you are, um, you can find a new niche, a new business is popping off before any stock analysis does, any a realtor expert before this media coverage just by your everyday think uh, your everyday actions and the people around you just think back at like let's say 2000 what is it 12 13 you were using spotify your best friend was using spotify your best friend's mom was using spotify uh, people didn't trust it at first it was like ah this must be scammy and it was like it was free you didn't have to like do were ads but it was free and then it kept on evolving, evolving, and suddenly everyone at school was using Spotify, you know? So that's like an example, or let's say strategy gaming, you could see, work. yeah, whatever. You could put it in anything. So he gives you examples and tools on how to recognize that and how to investigate the company. And aside from that, just general real estate, um, um, yeah, info, let's put it like that. I found it more valuable now. I've lear read Learn to Earn. And I just started like getting into this uh, stock market back then. And now that I have some more skin in the game, I feel like it's more in turn, it's more understood what man's saying. Penultimate one, The Mastery of Love by Ruiz. How can I put this? I've, this, this book is highly recommended like after a breakup or if you're going through some relationship troubles or maybe right before jumping into one like stepping into a new relationship it goes into like the love fear dynamics of relationships and where certain expectations come from the 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 duality of the the mind and the body and the things uh, the mind sometimes tricks you and wanting and instead of what the body actually needs so it it's actually real riddled with thought experiments that are, uh, are very personal and can help you like reach your further understanding. This is a very cheap therapist, <laughs> is all I'm gonna say. But I had write, written something down. So it's an exemplary piece that tries to give you insight on some of the traps, trap doors of relationship, needs of the body versus mind, and expectations we all hold, their origins and such. So yeah, uh, what is the best example I can give? So right here, you know, you highlight which parts, you can add a little annotations, understripe it, and it, 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 it can help you yourself just discover what is going on and why. But the best way to summarize the book might be, we don't have to suffer any longer if we are aware our mind is sick, that our emotional body is wounded, we can also heal so about that the emotional body he gives you like the scalpel the disinfectant and like the the bondage for it that's like what Ruiz is trying to give you and last but not least every time I find the meaning of life they change it by Daniel Klein 
Um, this was very light-hearted philosophical read. This man had a little notebook back when he was a philosophy student. Or whenever he found a cool quote, he wrote it down. And he stopped using it like about 35. And right now he's 70. So he's revisiting it and giving his outlook on it. And it puts us kind of in a perspective that we're all looking for a meaning of life. But it changes depending on our state of life, you know. But it was very cool. It's a good, good way to get in touch with like general philosophical strains. Um, and for me, it was definitely interesting. It's good. I found this blend by Blaise Pascal. He was a French mathematician, philosopher, rationalist, and Christian believer. It's a blend of mysticism and mathematics of existence. And that's something I kind of inspired to. It's more of like, on the one hand, like everything out there, like the entire universe, multiverse, like the Big Bang, all of that is like so is filled with mystique and on the other side it's like what are the mathematical chances of even you i think it was like one in 400 trillion is a mathematical chance of you being born so like in one part it's you existing of stardust and you actually containing every particle of the universe and the other side is like the mathematical odds of like those particles coming together and being you and me is insane at the time we're sharing here is is a, like life is a gift so i was like wow it's nice other people kind of ascribe to that as well. So that's definitely what it did for me. It gave me other artists, uh, philosophers to like dip, dive deeper on. It was very cool. Uh, it's not challenging at all. Um, so yeah, definitely one to recommend. Now onto now the cold months of October. I'll be reading uh, Malcolm X talks to the young people and Franz Fanon. Black skin, white masks. Follow along if you want to. I'll do one before the end of the month, don't worry. Uh, so yeah, tell me what you've been reading up. Tell me how your summer been. I'm very interested. Have a good time. Keep on reading. I do most.